What's up everybody, you're watching the Car Passion Channel and today I'm gonna to be installing the Mega Squirt ECU into Broken Boosted. Super excited to get this thing running on a standalone. It's been a long time coming. This is not gonna be a super detailed video about installation because I already have one of those and I'll link it down below. It's gonna cover the installation in full detail. I am, however, going to go over some of the steps I'm taking to convert a Broken Boosted style setup into taking Mega Squirt. Obviously, we're gonna be making a couple changes, getting rid of a couple things, and I will We'll go over that briefly and as always throughout the entire video if you have any questions be sure to drop them down below and I'll do the best I can to help you out. Now for those of you that are curious about how much power the car is making on the stock ECU, don't worry, I got you covered. When I bring the car up to advanced engine dynamics, I'm gonna bring both ECUs with me and I'm gonna throw it on the dyno and do a back-to-back -back comparison so you can see the difference. Keep in mind that converting to Mega Squirt is not just about power, it's also about several other things, including a topic that is very confusing, but I will get into that later in this video. Now before you go any further in this video, if you haven't seen the last video that I uploaded, I encourage you to please check that out. It has some very important information that you need to know about tuning the car yourself. And I know it has bad wind noise, guys. I'm sorry about the wind noise. I got a whole bunch of people hating on that. Uh, but if you could just try to overlook it and listen to what I'm saying, it really is important stuff. And I'm gonna warn you right now, this series is gonna have a lot of talking like this and explaining things, so I try to keep it brief, I try to keep it entertaining, I try to pack it with information, but at the same time, there are important points that I have to get across, so bear with me on that. I know sometimes it's probably gonna get boring, but I wanna make sure I give you guys as much knowledge as possible before you start tuning the cars yourself. I'm sure I'll think about more topics to talk about in this video, but for now, let's get started on this install. All right, so we're we're in the process of swapping over to Meg Squirt here. What I've done is I pulled the stock ECU out, which is just a matter of a couple 10 millimeter nuts, put the Mega Squirt in, plug your stock plugs right into it if you got a plug and play, and then just run one vacuum line from the engine bay through the firewall, and it's gonna hook up to Mega Squirt. Hook up your tuning cable, and you put your four panel back in, and as far as that's concerned, you're ready to go. Over at the engine bay fuse box, I've got the cover off, and this one that says ST sign 10 amp right here corresponds to this fuse right here you're gonna pull this out and you're not gonna put it back in unless you switch back to the stock ECU as long as you're running mega squared you're gonna run this ST sign fuse out Another thing I'm going to be doing is completely removing this whole AFM setup. That's one of the super awesome parts of running Mega Square is you have complete freedom to set up the intake however you want. You don't have to worry about where you're going to put the AFM, if you have to extend the harness or anything like that. It's super easy. Now I'm running something like this, no AFM. It's a little bit cleaner, not super clean because the compressor outlet piping still has to go around the AC and power steering, which I still have. So it's kind of crammed up in there, but it's not quite as bad as it was. I'm also gonna remove this O2 sensor signal modifier completely. I'm just gonna unplug my pins here and I'll either resolder them or just put a connector between them. You won't need that anymore once you convert to a standalone. The vacuum line that comes from the Mega Squirt, I just teed it right into the vacuum line that runs to the FMU. And to be clear, I am leaving the FMU in place for now. As long as I'm running stock injectors, even with Mega Squirt, the FMU still increases the power potential of the fuel system. But if you're just starting to convert over to Mega Squirt and putting turbo stuff on your cars, it's just easier to go with a bigger injector and forget the complication of the FMU. Since I deleted the AFM, the next thing I have to do is tap in an air temperature sensor right before the throttle body. I'll include a link and timestamp in a video down below where I show you how to do that. There's the finished product. Sensor's tapped into the intercooler pipe. Now I just have to plug that in and pin into the AFM plug. Next thing I'm gonna do is switch over from the narrow band output to the wide band output. Remember when we installed the Innovate AFR gauge, there were two options for an output to the ECU. We hooked up the narrow band because that's what the stock ECU needs. Now that we're switching over to Mega Squirt, we have to hook up the wide band output. The colors I'm gonna be talking about here really only hold true if you have an Innovate MTXL. If you have a different kind of wide band in your car, you might just have to change a setting on the gauge or your wires might be different colors. On the MTXL, this brown wire is the output for a narrow band signal, which is required by the stock ECU. Now that I have Mega Squirt, I'm gonna cut this connection and I'm gonna hook the yellow wire up instead. If this is confusing, guys, make sure to check out my wideband install and it should make a lot more sense. 
I don't want to send you guys on wild goose chases with all these video links, but I also don't want to waste time in my videos teaching you how to do the same things over and over. So if there's something in the video that you missed or don't understand, always check the description because I usually put several links to other videos that will help you out. The last things you need to do are get your laptop hooked up to Megasquirt and load on a base map. And then you're gonna immediately set your base timing, which I do want to talk about for a minute. There's been some confusion on what exactly base timing is. People have come to me and said, in Broken Boost in episode 14, you're talking about retarding the timing to six and eight degrees, but in your Megasquirt installation video, you said you're putting the timing at 10 degrees. What's the deal? Well, both ECUs, stock and aftermarket, both have a timing map. You see on the stock ECU, nothing is adjustable on the map. The only way you can change anything is with the CAS on the engine. And when you rotate the CAS, let's say you retard the timing two degrees on the CAS, you take that entire timing map and retard it two degrees. So let's say at wide open throttle, normally you're at 30 degrees, now you'd be at 28 degrees because you've taken that two degrees again off the entire map. With Megasquirt, every part of your map is adjustable. You can run 16 degrees here, 30 degrees there, 10 degrees there, you can do whatever you want. So you're just setting that 10 degrees as a base reference, a base point, and that's the difference. If that's super confusing and makes no sense at all, please drop me a comment down below, I'll try to explain it better. That's all I have for you. The Megascore is now in the car and in the next video I'm going to do first startup and initial tuning and then I'm going to start teaching you guys how to do data logs and getting into tuning the fuel map and much more fun stuff. I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it. I'll see you in the next one. If you, oh my god dude, the truck. Freaking risers dude.